Evening, it's now seven o'clock. Uh, do a roll call for uh, all the committee members. Alderman Witt. Here. Alderman Kleiner. Here. Alderman Green. Here. Alderman Ray. Here. Okay, all the committee members are present to conduct business this evening. Uh, tonight on the agenda, we have traffic coming device for Highland Avenue, and we received some data from the chief of police that was very helpful to cut, so we could kind of understand what's uh, what's happening in, on Highland Avenue, so we could uh, correct the issue. Uh, without saying, I'll bring the police chief to the mic so you could give us an overview of what's going on on Highland Avenue and how could we fix the problem. <laughs> uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, in regards to the data that I provided, um, that was just to give us a, a baseline of what we're dealing with. Um, as far as the solution, I, I'm not sure there's a simple solution. Um, what uh, what questions would you have for me? You want me to go over the specific data? I mean, or you have it? Everybody has it, right? Yes. Yeah, we do have it. But uh, uh, well, I, first of all, I got to say, uh, your department is doing a wonderful job keeping the city safe. And you guys out there, you know, putting your life on the line and, 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 and doing the right thing for the city of Middletown. Uh, but the issue we have on Island Avenue seems to be a, a speeding, speeding issue, you know. And is there anything your department could do more to kind of put a damper on that issue. I, I think something that we implemented this year was the dedicated traffic unit, which we're utilizing a dedicated person daily to address traffic concerns, not just on Highland Avenue, but the other areas of concern throughout the city as well, um, which has been successful. We're seeing good statistics coming from that. Um, it allows them the time and freedom to address those without being interrupted by call volume. Um, and gives them a little bit more familiarity with the situations. We also have had them come to some of the constituent meetings to hear directly from the constituents as well, so they could take that back with them in their enforcement efforts. Uh, I'm hoping that's been successful. I hope that you're seeing a difference with that. Alderman Kleiner. Thank you. Uh, Chief, my question would be, uh, given the Highland Avenue statistics, I know you've done the same studies on other streets, and in the second ward we got a lot of concerns about speeding on Watkins and in Commonwealth and other places, and I'm sure you hear it. How do the Highland Avenue statistics compare with the other places that, that you've done that kind of study on? I, I mean, I, I look at it and it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to stand out in terms of speeding. So Highland Avenue, the numbers are going to be greater just because there's more volume. Um, we haven't done, I haven't taken those specific stats that I've given you in regards to Highland Avenue from other streets. I didn't know that's what you would, would like. So that would be something we'd have to work on. However, when we look at the statistics that are generated from the speed trailer, which we've had all over the city, we keep historical data from that. Traditionally, we're seeing from 85 to low 90% of compliance of vehicles traveling at 35 miles an hour or less. So the system is set up, it's in five mile per hour increments. So when I set it at, or when we have it set at 30 miles an hour, if someone's going at 31, which to me wouldn't be really speeding per se, it would calculate that as speeding. So now we've adjusted it to make it 35 and below. So we're seeing on average 85 to low 90% compliance there. And that's pretty much across the board. On um, Every time we do run the, the traffic trailer, the speed trailer, we do have high speeds. There's a handful of high speeds that are still a concern. And I think that's, you know, one of the issues. Like we're I don't think there's a single thing that we can do, and I know enforcement is, is my, in my realm, but I don't think even with you know, super enforcement, we're going to eliminate every single speeding situation. Um, we are trying to make changes to adjust and address it and hear your concerns, the constituents' concerns, um, and you know, see where we can go. Well, let me agree. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, and thank you, Chief, for the data, and especially for sending your officers to our meetings. Um, and they did explain. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Tholen at the last meeting that you try and rotate the officers through that speeding enforcement because it can get mundane almost to them to only be doing that or you know it, it brings a fresh person in to try and you know uh, uh, start that that higher enforcement numbers because I know officer um, 
uh, Ortiz? Yes. Yes, thank you. I, his uh, name escaped me, but uh, he was doing a phenomenal job and he came to our meeting and was very great with our, our uh, constituents and answered all their questions about it. Um, you know, like you said, we have that 80 to even 90 in some cases or more percent of people who are doing the right thing. Who are, are, but yet, it's, I don't think it's that part that we need to focus on. I think what we have to focus on as a committee as a whole is doing something anywhere in the city to show that we're trying something new, that we hear your concerns about that 1% or that 2% or even the 5 that, you know, it only takes one person to do something stupid and get killed. That's what we hear all the time in our meetings or to hit a child who's in the street because they're speeding. So I think, you know, do you think that something like a speed calming device is the way to, to do that? Or do you think it's just getting more information out there on, you know, we have these dedicated units now and that's, you know, you, you have to, you're going to get fined if you're doing the wrong thing. You know, I just, I'm looking for your opinion. Do you think it's something that we should do physically or is it something that we need to create a mindset along the lines of, say, Montgomery, as soon as you pull in there, you know, I, I'm not saying you have to be that crazy, but, you know, everyone knows in Montgomery, if you do 32, as you approach that school, you're going to get pulled over regardless. You know, and I understand the discretion and appreciate the discretion totally. I'm just curious is what we, you know, do. Do we explore this physical in your opinion or do we continue to just do what we do? So just the, the comment on the department that you referenced, uh, that concern of speeding and getting a ticket. Um, apples to oranges because they don't have a call volume that we do. So a majority of their enforcement can be done on traffic. So they're not running call to call and, and they don't have the, the volume, the, the, um, the numbers of residents that we have here. So it is a little bit different. Um, t typically in the cities, we, you don't see a large traffic enforcement because you don't really have the highways and, and whatnot. You know, normally have like the stop signs, speeding and stuff. So I, I see both ways. However, I think it's, it's not going to be the, the end all, just like a stop sign. We ask for stop signs or slow intersections or whatever it is, and it just transitions the complaint from the speeding to now someone's running the stop sign. So I do believe the, a major component of it is enforcement. It's just being able to be there in all these different areas right. at the same time. The other thing that the speed trailer does for us is it counts cars and it gives us data on high volume times. So when we try to address all the needs of the community, we try to utilize that information to best implement our resources. And again, it's not a perfect system. And you know, just about every single time we get information back, we'll see a high speed 80s and 90s miles per hour. And that's what the residents are seeing and that's their perception and it's their reality as well. I can't take that away from them. Um, oftentimes it starts in the spring. It's, it, it, every year, springtime, when the windows come open and people are outside, the complaints of traffic is the, the, the primary uh, complaint that I hear from you, you guys hear from the constituents. Um, enforcement needs, needs to be better. Um, I have. No, no qualm saying that. And that's one of the reasons we implemented the full-time traffic detail. And as you mentioned, Lieutenant Tholen saying, we like that fresh start because it gives someone a little bit of energy, gives them a little bit of a reward. And we only choose the people that are actually doing it on their own to begin with that have the desire to do it. We're not just putting somebody in there to say, hey, let's see if we could get them the right tickets. We're taking officers that are writing tickets and giving them the freedom to do it on a full-time basis. Thank you, Chief. All the men wait. Thank you, Chief. Um, I, I just think, because I know there's another side of this, that what we're going to do about this, whether it's physically put something in the, in the streets or adjust whatever we're going to do, I just, I, I just think that we can't just drop it on people and say this is what we're going to do. Um, is it, what about if we were to commit more resources to speeding and or, or and and say to people listen this is an initiative that we're putting out and if we have everyone's backing or the majority however you want to do it if someone sees it differently i certainly respect that and say we have the council's backing the committee's backing the police chief's backing and say hey listen we're trying this for however many months it's not working we need to do something and and at least so we can say to people hey listen we made this a commitment. Um, we have this on the books and, and go from there. I just, you know, because I know we're hearing traffic calming, and I certainly respect people's opinion on that. And I was away for four years, so I don't know what everybody, you know, has been hearing during that time. 
I know we all hear it from people and I just feel like there needs to be respectfully maybe a little more that we can say to them and say this is what we're doing you know and and uh, and go from there I like that idea you and I have spoke about that briefly um, I'm willing to go down that road I think if we could identify the major areas of concern that we want to see the difference I will dedicate an individual just to work on that project with traffic counting times of day giving us real-time st statistics that I can report back to the committee as a whole and we could, whatever amount of time that you guys deem necessary, you want a month, two months, three months, whatever it is, um, you tell me and we can make that happen. Where that's, that'll be their sole, sole assignment, but that's gonna be, I'll need information from collective, you collectively of what areas are, are we doing citywide. Citywide is kind of impossible for me to give you that type of information, but. Uh, let me just go real quick. I mean, the two area that we uh, had conversation on last meeting, it was Highland Avenue and, and uh, South Street. Was it South Street? Yeah, South Street South was Street. something that was discussed about doing a raised uh, crosswalk. Crosswalk, yeah. Um, we was going to use that as a pilot program. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think we get the speed, so we get a handful here and there, but you don't have the, the volume of speed on South Street. Okay. But if that's what you want, then that's what now, we'll Is there any other area that you could think of as far as... Uh, <laughs> we could go Avenue. around, oh, yeah. Each yeah. ward has their whole... Yeah. Each ward has a handful of locations. Mm -hmm. And that's the difficult part. Like, when we put out the traffic car, we're trying to address every one of those locations that come up in each ward right. to give the respect to each one of you and to address the issues. Um, so I think collectively we'd have to identify the areas that are most prominent in each, each ward for us to focus on. Okay. And... I think we'd have to stick to them because when Mrs. Whomever or Mr. Whomever says, oh, I have speeding on my street, are we going to shift and put the focus there or are we going to stay on what we're actually looking at, these high volume areas, high traffic areas, high complaint areas? Um, that's going to be something like I could give you what I feel are, but I don't know what you're receiving overall from the, from the constituents. Thank you. Like Highland is always one. You have Eisenhower, you have Monhagen, you have West Main, you have Way Way Onda, you have East Main, you have parts of North Street, you have Cottage Street, you have Sprout, you have Sprague, you have Janung. Dolson Avenue is a highway. No. Um, but it seems like Allen Avenue is it seems to be on the forefront because we've been talking about that for years. Absolutely. It's always Highland Avenue that's coming out because it's such a, a residential wide, area yeah. street and a wide big street. That's correct. Right. I would so, say without a doubt that would be one of our primary focuses. I'm not, I'm not experted by any means, but what I've read about with the urban planning is uh, narrowing the streets calms the traffic. If you can narrow the streets. I've had people just put like those construction cones out, and when the road tightens up, people go slower. And I was thinking, maybe I had this idea, like uh, maybe, maybe paint, just paint. You know, I'm against a physical barrier, but paint the parking lines out spot, and then two bike lanes on either side. Because I know the sidewalks up there are bad. They're the blue stones. If you try to jog or walk or stroller, it's, you can't because it's like Tetris. That would narrow the road and give you two nice bike lanes on either side. I'm not sure if there's enough room for that. And maybe to Will could comment. Be, but, uh, commissioners. But that would be just paint. It wouldn't be a physical barrier, but it would narrow the road and also give two bike lanes. People could ride down the one side and back the other. I don't know. Just an idea. Alderman Ray. Um, we we've been uh, we've had this conversation before. Um, I, I mean, it's it's a complicated thing because you know you think you're solving a problem on Highland, and now you've made it really hard to speed on Highland. So what happens to Commonwealth? You know, we had talked about those speed bumps, and so now like, well, now I can't drive my car faster the speed bump, but I can blow the stop signs on Commonwealth, and just tear down that road, which is not a wide road that is capable of handling increased traffic. So I think now you have to worry about unintended consequences. So you narrow streets that were built to handle large volumes of cars, and now you're shifting that volume onto roads that are not equipped to handle the volume so that they can avoid those measures. And I think like when Chief speaks about statistics, they are important because if it is 1% or 2%, then we are altering a traffic pattern for a city and the volume into roads that where we don't want it for 1%. And that becomes a real 
issue in terms of traffic flow. I just, we've been here, we've had these conversations, we really did examine it, you know, and then you, we, we have roads with, that are narrower with speeding problems, very similar to Highland. Highland is built, you know, to handle it. I mean, I've got constituents on Wei Onda with a speeding issue and their front door is three feet from the street. So they're way more concerned about a speeding car and a child running out of a house than on Highland when the front yard is 200 feet long. You know, I mean, so they're coming to me and they, at that time, they were coming to me saying, well, what about our problem? Because safety wise, it's way more dangerous, the speeding on Wei Onda than it is on Highland. So, you know, we really do at the end of the day, when you, when you we've had this conversation, you know, enforcement really is the lesson and nothing works better for everyone who drives by a pulled over car than those lights. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. And that, you know, so it's not just the car you pulled over, it's every car that drove by. And it's every car that drove by and saw them on the road, you know? And I, you know, I understand our, we have limitations in terms of how much enforcement we can dedicate to that, but that really is, I believe, our most effective means. And then on the flip side of that, once the ticket's been written, what we really need is support from the court where we don't plead things down. You know, the real key is gonna be, you got a ticket here, we'll give the tickets, but you'll speed again if you just walked out and paid a parking ticket, cause you showed up for court too. So we need the balance on both sides. We're like, you get a ticket here, you're gonna get the points and you're, you're gonna pay for it because it is a safety problem. But when we come to traffic calming, I just, this just is my personal opinion. And, but I just feel like we've been down this road and we've looked at a, a number of options. And when it comes right down to it, the people that will speed, will speed and they will do it on whatever street is most available. So we make it impossible on Highland and they're just gonna do it on Commonwealth. And that's the reality that we have to deal with. That's your one, 2%. I mean, that sign we put up on Highland, I think, and for a lot of people who've driven by it have been like, that has really been effective because it's absent-minded people who are going over the 30 on Highland because it's a big road. And if no one's on it, you're just kinda going along. Now we have that sign that's like, hey, and all those people slow down, like, oh, God, go a little faster than I thought. And I feel like that, in terms of Highland, has been pretty effective in bringing that down. Because those lights flash at you, you don't even realize that you're doing 35. And it, and it takes it down. But, that, I mean, we're hearing 1%, 2%, and we're talking about rerouting traffic patterns in, in a city that Highland was made for a volume. It was designed for volume. And we're turning it into a road that doesn't, and all we're going to do is move volume somewhere where it doesn't belong. That's just my thoughts. I'm going to say Thank you. And I think tickets uh, catch attention. I think that's the difference between, that's why most people are talking about Montgomery. I think that's the only difference because when they go to court, you know it's going to hit your pocket. And people, they get the information. They know what's at stake. Alderman? I'm going to pass on this. We've really gone round and round the Maypole. Okay. It seems that the obvious answers are not that effective. Um, I agree with Alderman Ray. I think the signs also, by the way, the one by 12 Oaks, I'm not sure it's working anymore. I don't see it lately. But I do think the people that are going to speed, <laughs> speed, as I've said before, I still have people cars passing me in the double yellow and not hanging every morning, cutting through the gas station, not being at the light to go over there. That kid, sorry to profile, is going to do that regardless. Um, so, whatever we, whatever we collectively think, I support it, um, but it may not be as obvious as we think it is when we decide what to do. Thank you. Chief? Just to comment on Alderwoman uh, Ray's uh, uh, example, I think you lived it uh, a couple years ago when the traffic was diverted from oh. West Main, um, more of a thoroughfare down, everything came down yeah. California. and. I feel it was like kind of twofold because now people felt they were inconvenienced. They had to go faster to get to where they were going. And now they're going down a narrower, more residential street. Um, so I do believe that we divert it. Um, this is not unique to us. Um, I sit on traffic safety board or I go to the traffic safety board meetings quarterly. This is statewide. The statistics statewide are 
more than double of what they've been in, in previous years. Um, and it's a challenge. We talked about this at, at those meetings about it's not just the enforcement, it's the court system as well. Um, you know, not having a sanction and not being held accountable. Um, with some of the young individuals, there used to be fines and going to what was called uh, Live at 25. They're seeing the same youths come in there two, three, four times, which was never intended. It was supposed to be one and done, but because they're in multiple courts, and there's, that's just one part of it. Yes, come in. Um, Chief, you've mentioned uh, prior uh, in other meetings we've had about uh, the higher fines on things like the uh, loud exhausts. Have you noticed that working towards those, you know, instances? Have we seen lower, lower instances of that because we've been giving out five hundred dollar fines instead of you know a hundred dollar pleading down? Uh, do you do you notice in terms of enforcement on things like that? Has have those instances gone down because of the higher fines? I, I don't know if we've seen a, a drastic decrease thus far. I think the individuals that have received those fines are probably made some changes, but right. we still have a lot of people <clears throat> to deal with. Oh, right. Um, on that same topic, though, the state has just created a change in their laws with inspections. You can't get your vehicle inspected if it doesn't have the standard exhaust on it. So I think it's going to take a little bit for us to get through some of that. And let's face it, there's places that are you know, doing inspections with tinted windows, that's illegal. So we'll have some places to deal with that as well. Right. But they, the state has recognized that, that we have to address it on another level. I was just piggybacking off because I agree with Alderman, Alderwoman Wright that, you know, you're going to have to hit them in the pocket. That's the only way. That's the most effective way, I think. You know, you make a great point about narrowing one street and then you see traffic on the other one. It's, it's a very valid point, and I, and I appreciate your uh, input on that. You know, and... and we, we came here to talk about Highland and Second Ward, but I, I, you know, it is a full city issue, and, and I just think you had some great ideas there. So thank you. Right, thank you. Commissioner, do you have anything sure. that you could share with us? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll start off. I thank mean, you, I, my, my presentation would have been what Alderman uh, Ray said. I mean, she hit all the points right on the nose. Honestly, I don't have to repeat them. Uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, you can't take these things lightly. Uh, you know, uh, we will do, as DPW, we will do whatever you guys direct us to do. We're not here to argue. We're not here to say, no, we don't want to do anything. Every complaint is really valuable complaint, and it is worth listening to. But I remember living on Prospect Avenue in between a short block. My kids were not allowed, like Alderman Ray said in the previous public. You already had two public hearings about this. 2016, the mayor gave you background last time. 2001, the city commissioned a study with traffic and, and everything like that. And we had two public hearings. And the public hearings, there were results that came out of them and we implemented them. The results were that radar sign on Highland Avenue. I think it was the first one to be installed in the whole region and everybody started copying it, including us, because it was very successful. Uh, some people made fun of it, uh, saying, I don't know if that says congratulations to me, I, I, I exceeded the speed limit, or is that going to slow me down? No. The people who are, this is for the people who are absent-minded, because the road is wide, it's inviting for you to go faster. Uh, you know, that's why, that's why it's very effective. The people who are going to speed, and they're going to make the noise, they're going to make it anyway, whether you put stop signs. If you put stop signs in there, it's a study. And it's documented by DOT and papers. And that's why everything you need to do, you got to do, bring an engineering firm. I'm not a traffic engineer. But however, I do have some background to know what not to do. Um, if, you're, if your aim, the statistics showed like 90, 85 percentile um, from the police department statistics, 85 percentile at, are at 32 percent. There's one guy who drove 94 percent. DOT tells you that those speed humps or speed bumps or uh, stop signs, if it's unnecessary, what's going to happen is the law breaker, what he's going to do is he's going to speed faster in between the two stop signs or the two speed humps or the two speed bumps or the two traffic lights to make up his lost time. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up with the noise coming out of it. Many of these uh, law breakers, they're also noise breakers. If you look at the notes that were taken in 2016 from the public hearing that was conducted here in this very chamber, many of you were here, people were complaining about the noise. 
I can't open my windows. If you put speed humps or bumps or, or, or stop signs unnecessarily, you're going to allow the people in there to slow down, get angry, and step on it and move, move, uh, move ahead. I'm not saying don't do anything. Don't misunderstand me. I will leave you with one thought in here, and then we can discuss this much more. There are chapter, there's a chapter, a specific chapter in the DOT manual to deal with, uh, with the traffic calming and, and, uh, and, and uh, what to do, the questions, typical questions. The mayor recirculated the questions that are asked by DOT before you make a decision about what to do. The, the, circulate, the questions that we issued back in 2016, he recirculated that email for you guys to see it. Uh, so it's not like, okay, I want to do this here and this here and this here. And what do you think, Jacob, or what do you think, Chief? It's got to be studied. Otherwise, we'll get screwed, and we're going to have to do it all over again. And South Street, where I live, it's, it's, a, speed, it's a speedway. Prospect in a so short section between stop signs, it was, a steep, it was a speedway for me, too. The speedway is all over. It's a cultural thing, unfortunately. Enforcement is the only thing. I'll leave you with one thought. The chief and his men, they cannot be all over the place all at once. Speed cameras and red light cameras and stop sign cameras and everything. It's a contractor who will come in and do it. It's generating revenue. It will hit people in their pocket. True, there is no points once you get those tickets. However, you have to pay the fine. Otherwise, it will escalate and escalate. The, 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 the science is advancing very fast in that direction. Speed cameras, you don't even have to be there. It will snap the picture of you speeding, and with your license plate, we'll send you the picture. And the same thing with the uh, stop sign if you roll through it, or, or, or uh, the red light, rather, when you roll through it. We can talk to these people. We can bring them in. It's a revenue stream for the city by those people who break the law. And, and, uh, and But it doesn't mean, again, I'm not saying don't do anything on Highland. I'm not saying don't narrow the road. Whatever you guys want to do, my recommendation to you is study it. I know you studied it in 2001. And the public hearings that we did 2016 and before that, two public hearings, I think Rick told me, we've done. I have the notes in here. The same comments that came all over. And, 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 uh, and we have done a lot of things on Highland Avenue. We installed even the blinking uh, pedestrian crossing. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, signage in there for Highland Avenue. It's not like we listened in 2016 and we walked away. We've done nothing. Thank you, Commissioner. I want to give the mayor a short time to. Well, sorry, mayor. I don't think you know. Uh, right. you're, you're two minutes or three minutes away from ending the meeting, so I don't know if I can give you uh, my opinion on, on on this things. But all I know is that we're just repeating ourselves from many years ago. No initiatives have been taken. Uh, I'm a supporter of all the things. I think every street is unique, and certain things can be done on different streets, including um, uh, infrastructure. I mean, it's not, uh, number one, I don't think we should be looking at speed cameras as a revenue source. I think that's a very bad choice of words, so I don't want that word to be out there, that the city is going to be giving out tickets for speeders as a revenue source. Um, I think enforcement, of course, is the ultimate key, but... Listen, we have 70-something miles of roads, um, and you're not going to solve this problem by enforcement. I think the debate here almost is an acceptance of that it's going to happen, and it's going to happen as frequently as it does unless we put a cop at every corner. Um, I'm a supporter of the combination of many, many things, and maybe speed cameras in certain areas might be part of a solution. Maybe speed humps are also part of a solution from my perspective. Um, that can't be done without your support. And obviously, it doesn't appear that there's support for those types of things. But I would hope that when the people come to the council meeting and complain about it, that you would say it to them. Not just say it when we're having a committee meeting. Is that you, know, you guys get the calls. We get a lot of the calls. And... Um, it's not, uh, it's, I grant you this, it's not an easy solution. So we have to mitigate whatever we can. Um, I know traffic diversion is, is a legitimate question. Um, spe narrowing the highway, or the, the uh, well, what appears to be a highway sometimes, Highland, those are all things that are being done in other communities. 
uh, th those the traffic narrowing at, at the intersections. Uh, why these things that our other communities are going are doing can't work here, I don't have the answer. I think they will work on certain streets. I think Eisenhower could use a speed hump, and I think it'll slow traffic down. Um, I think you. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any other diversion that someone can go around. You might have a legitimate thing on, on Watkins and, 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 um, and Highland. But uh, certain er that's part of the analysis that has to be done street by street where you're experiencing speeding. So I don't think it's one thing. I don't think um, enforcement alone um, is going to do it. But you guys have the pocketbook. You appropriate the money and we'll enforce whatever you put up to, um, whatever you decide to do in that area. But uh, the the infrastructure, I think um, there are infrastructure solutions that other communities are doing, and they do include speed, speed cameras. They do include speed humps. You see Walkula is now looking at doing it. Um, they do include all types of methods from traffic narrowing, our calming devices, um, and why can't they be done here? That's up to you. All right, it's now 7.30. As a comedian in whole, uh, I think if, if, uh, if what we could do, uh, Chief, if we say, so we, can we use the data within a month? Is that enough time for you to data of what? As far as which area it's, it's a problem in the city, can we get? say Highland Avenue and, and, and other streets where we could survey the area for about a month just to see the high traffic areas, high speeding areas from there, we could make a decision. Yeah, I will do whatever you want with that. Um, if you identify the areas that you want, um, just like for what we did after the last meeting when the gentleman came up from Highland Avenue, when we put the speed trailer back out there, I just did the percentages real quick and I believe I shared this with, with the members. So can you pause we, for a minute, Chief? Yep. Can we get more time? I know we're running out of time. Is that okay? Okay, All right. sorry, Chief. There's 96.6% compliance of speed on on Highland Avenue. That's That's pretty impressive. Again, there's a perception and there's reality associated with that, that there are some speeders. Um, as far as enforcement, um, this year alone, our enforcement has a 26% increase um, as to the end of May. And the other data that I gave you in regards to Highland Avenue, um, traffic enforcement is supposed to be for public safety, uh, traffic safety, reduced accidents. Um, you look at the statistics I gave for accidents on Highland Avenue over the last four years, it's very minimal when it's compared to the entire city as a whole. Um, the one, 2021, I believe we saw 27, if I'm not mistaken, on Highland Avenue. If you look year to date across the city, it was 700 and something. It was almost double of what we normally see. That was also a year we were coming out of a lockdown where people were getting out driving again <coughs> and we we're having you know, issues across the board with that. But I will, I will do what you ask of me as far as you know, identifying locations and doing some, some work on it. I'm, I'm ready to do that. Uh, just quickly, one thing I never heard this discussed before was a surveillance camera idea. Um, I would be interested in looking at that as a prototype. I think it would be remarkably infect effective if I got a speeding ticket in the mail and I never saw law enforcement and it just said you were clocked at, at 50 and a 30, here's your ticket. Uh, you know, a prototype, a stop sign, a speeding sign, um, just to see. I don't think it would be expensive. And um, it would keep people on their toes if they said, I don't have to see law enforcement to get written up for this infraction. Just, I'm intrigued by that idea. We've never discussed it before. Is that something we can enforce? Enforce? With yeah, as far as the uh, speed cameras? I'd have to look into that. I don't, I don't know the, the cost oh, of that. I don't know that. Yes, correct. Yes, I remember that too. Uh, yes. I'm not sure. Correct. Uh, does it have to be approved by the state legislature? Because I know Town of Walkill tried to do one near Walmart, but it was never approved. Correct. Right, so it'd yes. be a little process. New York City has them in certain school zones. They, I don't believe they have them citywide, but there's school zone enforcement in okay. here. They, the kind of they have them. They have them on the West Side Highway. I get caught all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so,
I'm just saying it's, it'd be a process. It's not just one. We well, buy them and put them up. Yeah. One of the other things that help over the last couple of years when we've upgraded our cars and replaced cars, we have radars built into them to, so that it wasn't just a handful of cars. Now just about every car has it to help with enforcement. But yeah, yes, uh, Alderman, whatever areas you, you want, we will put some effort into it. As a committee and host, should we table this meeting and to... I'm sorry, <clears throat> if we could further this discussion, maybe take it back to our own words, look at the streets we have, look at what other people are doing, and bring it back to another meeting. Okay, all right. With that, I have historical data from most of the high volume streets. Okay. If anybody would like historical data from the speed trailer for those, please let me know what Can streets. Can you email it to the I council? Prefer, I could, you just tell me which streets and I could email that out. Okay. Right. Or the high volume, that's all we need, right? And yes. we don't need all the streets. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who you speak to. Right. Each ward has their own concerns of high volume. So that's why I'm asking, like, I could give you whatever I have, but it would be nice if you told me which ones you want to focus on. I think it's the main arteries, the ones that, you know, that are wide, Hagen Avenue, you know, all, everybody. I mean, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we'll look at that. I mean. Yes, just give us what you have. Then we'll just, as a committee and whole, we'll take a look at it. Then we'll make our decision from there. Okay, it's now 7.36. Thank you, everyone. And